So this video is for my travelers, my solo travelers, but not just every traveler out there. This video is for a specific type of travelers, those who really believe that traveling can make the world a better place, that every traveler can make the world a better place. This video is for people that really love to immerse themselves in different cultures when they travel and really care about the people and the locations that they travel to. They're not just going to just be a visitor, but they're really going to learn, to explore, to have fun, of course, too. But I want to really talk to my more conscious travelers. And the reason why is because I have some information, some things that I would like to share that I myself as a traveler have been rethinking. And hopefully with this new information, it can help you to become a more conscious, more mindful and overall a better traveler. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> okay, okay. It's true. So, hi, my name is Kirsten. I am multi-dimensional person and one of my missions in life is to help people think differently so they can live a more authentic life and I do that in many different ways I do that through freelance writing I do that through coaching and by making these videos on YouTube and as a person that has traveled to numerous countries and lived in in three different countries the United States Panama and now Spain, I am from the United States. I like talking about traveling, but I also like to people, I like people, I like to help people think differently about how they travel and the ways that they travel so that this world can be a better place, put simply. So in today's video, I want to talk about a couple different things. I want to talk about an article that I wrote uh, when I first started freelance writing about my experience living in Panama and kind of how I've been rethinking some of the things that I said in that article. Like I don't want to, I don't regret what I said in that article. I don't take back anything that I said in that article, but I have been just reflecting on the message that that article is communicating and how can I better communicate that message in the future. And I also want to talk about visiting other countries and how to best support those countries economically because I think that something that I've been seeing that has been trending for a while and I'm starting to see a little bit of a pushback in social media is this desire, uh, this focus to go to ch countries that are significantly cheaper than a home country. So in the example of a lot of people from the United States going to countries where the US dollar is significantly more powerful or you can do more with the US dollar than the local currency and how there are both pros and cons to that type of travel and what we can do as travelers to better support the local economy in the places that we travel. So first, let me talk about the, out the article that I wrote. Uh, it, I wrote, it was one of the very first articles that I wrote for as a freelance writer, and I wrote it for Travel Noir, which is one of my favorite travel publications. And it was pretty much talking about, I think the title was uh, How I Lived in Paradise for $600 a Month. And so I got inspired to write that article for one, it was my life at the time I was living in Panama and that was like my salary. And two, I saw other articles on Travel Noir that had similar topics. So I thought it would be a good addition to the publication. And three, um, I really just felt very inspired to help other people do what I did in a sense of moving out of the United States and living in a better country, it, oh, living in a different country where the cost of living is lower, uh, there's other benefits as well, and yeah, just a better quality of life. Um, I really was, you know inspired to help share this message that like there is more out there for you if you don't like where you're currently living. 
but now uh, I've been kind of rethinking that that message, and I think that um, there's more that I want to add to it. There's more that I want to communicate, other than this country is really cheap. Go live there. So if you want to read the full article, I'll link it in the description below. And I really broke down like my daily cost, my average cost. At the time, I was working as an English teacher in a, in a small school that had just opened up, a small English school that just opened up. And so the there are two or three main things that led me to be able to live this type of life. Uh, so one, I moved to a remote beach town, a remote area called Playa Vanel, and it is an absolutely beautiful place. I lived there during, during, yeah, uh, 2019. So it was, it now, um, it's definitely more developed than it was before. Um, but when I lived there, it was very under underdeveloped. And what does that mean? That means that there were just hostels, um, one little grocery store, and beach, and and uh, jungle. Like very, it wasn't a big city. Like we think, it, like think of the smallest city that you know, and then think smaller than that. <laughs> And that's where I lived. It was great because I literally lived right on the beach. Like I could wake up and from uh, where I lived, I could see the beach. I could hear the ocean waves at night sometimes. It was absolutely uh, beautiful. Um, so my advice for people that like maybe are looking to move abroad because the cost of living is lower, definitely you want to look at places that are not in bigger cities. You can, but if you really want, uh, to, you know, to lower your cost of living, usually you can find places that are a little bit more remote, a little bit um, outside of the major cities, because that's going to give you a lower cost of living. And the other thing I think that contributed to helping me keep my cost of living low was, and something that I continue to do and I always promote and always try to do when I travel, is to buy locally. Um, there was a food truck guy that would come and bring us like truck fulls of vegetables and fruit for a very uh, low cost. Um, I, I shopped at local stores and things like that. So I think that shopping locally is definitely something that not only will help your cost of living stay low, but also is something that can support the local economy, which is something that I'm really, really, really trying to be or always try to be more conscious of. Uh, I remember um, going to Mexico Um I remember I was talking to a tour guide and he told me um, there was like this store that would be like the equivalent to maybe like a 7-Eleven or like kind of like a drugstore, like a mini market type of store for people that live in the US. And I would go there and I would get my things, not thinking of it. And, and then a tour guide told me, he's like, if you can try not to shop there because what happens is because these these stores are like owned by some big corporation, the money doesn't go back into the country. The money just kind of stays within that big company. Um, so it really doesn't support the local economy. Um, so ever since then, I've been really conscious of like where I buy my food because or where I buy my things. Sometimes you can't avoid it, you know, but for the most part, if there's an opportunity to shop local, I definitely do that. Okay, so here's the part I'm rethinking. So I definitely, as a writer, and I will take full responsibility, I have definitely contributed to this trend, this perception of going to live or going to visit places that are cheaper uh, than in the United States. I'm going to use the United States as an example. Other 
first world countries can also be used as an example, but because I'm from the United States, I'm going to just reference the U.S. And so when we... I understand. I understand the allure and the ne even the necessity uh, to go to these countries that essentially there is a big difference between the U.S. dollar and the local economy. Country where the U.S. dollar is more powerful, it can go further, it can buy you more, is empowering, uh, especially because the United States is expensive. Like I get it, um, and you want to be able to you want to be able to travel because traveling there's so many benefits of traveling both to the person that is traveling and to the local country that you're visiting. So many benefits, but. The problem is, is when we just go to these countries and we move to these countries thinking that, oh, it's so affordable to live here. It's so easy to live here. But every for every reaction, there's what is the what is the expression for every action? There's an opposite or equal reaction. And that is the same thing when we go to a different country. It's like when we're moving there. Our presence there, our money that we spend there is having an effect on the economy. And sometimes it's having an effect, a negative effect on the local economy. Now, that's not to say that we shouldn't move any place, any foreign, we shouldn't move to any foreign place. It's not to say that we shouldn't travel to other places. I'm making this video, I'm bringing up this topic because I want us to just think a little bit differently about how we spend our money. And I want us to, as myself, as a traveler, I want us to be more mindful of where we're putting our dollars, what we're doing when we take out our wallets and we're swiping our cards, et cetera, et cetera. I think that when we have more consciousness in this process, then we can make things better, not only for ourselves, but for everyone else as well. And I see this a lot too on social media in regards to Spain and people thinking that like Spain is so cheap and and yes it is the cost of living in comparison the cost of things like eating out groceries um etc cetera, etc cetera, is dramatically different <laughs> than the United States for example I can go out uh, with 10 euros approximately like 11 dollars and have a good meal like i can go out and get a couple of drinks uh with 10 or 20 euros like i can have a good meal i can have a couple of drinks i can have a good time um doing that definitely in my social life i've been able to socialize more and go out more um living in spain just because it is more affordable but that doesn't mean that everything <laughs> is more affordable. For example, inflation has hit here um, in Spain too. And I I talk to my friends and local people that tell me the prices of groceries um, has, ex has risen so much in the past five, 10 years. Even in my five years of being here, I would go to the store and buy olive oil. That would be, I'd buy like, maybe like half a liter or like uh, 500 milliliters of olive oil that is literally made in the city that I live in. And I would get a bottle for like maybe four or five euros, you know, equivalent to like five or six US dollars. And now it's almost 10 euros for the same bottle that I paid half the price for. So I think that I, I want and I'm, I'm speaking about this topic because I want to take off this veil that we that a lot of people had that I had too that these countries are dramatically uh, cheaper uh, and yes they are more affordable for someone that is coming to this country with the U.S. salary but the reality is for locals for people that live here that people that people that make it possible for you to visit this country the cost of living isn't as easy or isn't as affordable as it is to you. Okay, so I don't know if anything that I just said has is resonating with you. If you agree with it, if you disagree with it, let me know in the comments. I, I'm making this video to, uh, to share information, to share my thoughts, but also to start a conversation because I don't think that uh, information should be one way. I don't think that you should listen to my videos and just be like, okay, yes, that's it. Um, let me know. Um, this topic is very new to me. Uh, I'm still doing research. I'm still learning about it. I'm still talking to people. So this, this, um, 
So if you are an expert or you have more experience or more knowledge to me on this topic, definitely leave me a comment below. Tell me more about your experiences. Uh, tell me about what you have learned about traveling and supporting local economies and, and local people. I would love to, to learn more. So to end this video, I want to just kind of point out a couple of things that I, I personally do and I think that all travelers should start incorporating to a certain extent um, to help better kind of reach this balance of traveling to places uh, where there's an economical difference. Because what is happening is that when a country receives an influx of travelers, from another country, for example, the United States, and that people with the US dollar can buy more and afford more, the prices of things go up because people in the tourism industry are saying, hey, all these people are coming with their US dollars. Um, that equals, you know, double the, the amount of the local economy, the local currency. So let's raise the prices. <laughs> let's raise the prices. And when they raise the prices, US citizens might look at the price and say like, hey, that's still way more affordable than the US and buy it. And so what it starts is this um, this new norm that like I can sell this product for 10 times or five times what it originally was because I know an American's gonna come here and buy it. But a local is looking at that price and saying like, I can't, I can't afford that. <laughs> and so what happens, the local economy, the local people end up suffering because they can't match the price increase that has happened because of the influx of tourism. So let's talk about a couple of things uh, that we can do to kind of balance out. And again, if I mention something that you're like, oh no, actually don't do that. Um, don't do that. That's actually not um, wise to do that. Let me know in the comments. All right. So here are four things that you can do. One, uh, I mentioned it before, is shopping locally, going to local restaurants, uh, going to local grocery stores, um, and really shopping, you know, really paying attention to where you shop. Even though sometimes going to a store that looks like an international store or a store that's just like right across from your hotel, oh, it's so convenient, it's right there. Um, make sure that you know where your money is going because you don't want to be a victim of tourism leaking, which is when I mentioned before, when the money that is um, the money, the profit that is made from selling a product in within a certain company, certain store, stays within that international company and doesn't go back into the local economy. So that is the first thing. The second thing is to, when you're looking at your vacation, you're traveling, look for local tour guides. Look for people that are from there, that are working in, in the tourism industry that really, or at least have lived there for a very long time. Um, really focus on supporting local companies throughout your visiting, throughout your tourism. In addition to that, um, looking for like minority owned companies or companies that uh, support indigenous, indigenous groups or local communities within the country that you're traveling to. The third thing is to talk to people, to talk to locals, talk to, um, it was actually one of my favorite things to do while traveling. So if you're staying at a hotel or you're staying with a local uh, Airbnb or a hostel, uh, talk to people, ask them where are the best places to go in regards to supporting the local people, uh, what are some events that you could go to, really talk to them and, and get to know how you can best help the people, even if it means like volunteering or supporting a local co uh, local community. I remember when I went to Cuba, this is, might sound like a humble brag, but it's not, I'm not really trying to humble brag. I'm just trying to give an example, a real life example. But when I went to Cuba, I remember uh, like leaving some of the like donating some of my extra clothes because you know I overpack um I overpack and I you know I packed too many clothes and I realized on my trip I didn't wear um 
like a fourth of the clothes that I brought. So the, the clothes that I didn't wear, I, I donated to, I stayed at a, a local uh, Airbnb or a local hostel. Um, and I, I just donated my clothes that I, that I wasn't going to wear anymore or wasn't wearing. Um, I, I, and I had a wonderful host who was like an older woman and took really good care of me and um she often commented on my on my clothes and how she really liked them and they looked really good and so i left them um and I, it's a very 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 small thing to do but i think that if you go to a country with the lens of like well how can i help uh what more can i do um then i think that you can you can make a difference you can definitely make a difference the last, the fourth thing is to do your research. I think that do your research of where you're staying, <laughs> uh, who you're working with, things like that. Um, I think if you do your research and, and really understand like, okay, where is my money going? If I'm paying for paying this company, what has this company done to support the local uh, community? Is this company's practices ethical, uh, sustainable, things like that? There are so many like echo hotels and local and like sustainable businesses and companies that are really popping up over, uh, have popped up and been created over the last couple of years. So I think that if you do your research, just you know, take a little bit of time and do your research and really understand like what companies um are in different countries and who you're going to be staying with and what they stand for what are their values what are their beliefs etc what are their practices etc cetera, etc cetera. um it can really make a difference uh in in the experience and how you support the company or how you support the country if you got through all that video thank you i feel like my words were just kind of like I don't know if it made any sense. I hope that it did. Uh, again, this is a topic that I'm very passionate about, but also very new, uh, very novice uh, on this topic. But I've had this topic in my heart for a really long time, and it's been burning a fire, and I've been wanting to talk about it. And rather than wait until... Um, you know, rather than wait until the perfect moment, I guess, I was just like, well, let me just start speaking about it now. And we'll see who it resonates with. And we'll see what people say and uh, see who who could help me learn more about this. And, and yeah. Uh, anyways, let me know what you think. Ciao for now.